Hello, welcome to www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about the shadow and highlight adjustment tool that is really kind of nestled pretty deep here in Photoshop CS6, but it's extremely powerful, and you can use it not only on your HDR images, but you can also use it on uh, any of your photographs for that matter. And now, on here, I usually show uh, my tutorials on HDR images like you see here. This actually is an HDR image. It was uh, three or five tone mapped uh, exposures in Photomatix just to get the detail out of it. But you can use it on any, it doesn't matter. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is press Command or Control J. Now right click and convert that new layer to a smart object. If you've never worked with smart objects before, they're actually really powerful. Um, what you can do with the smart object layer is any permanent filter, like say a Gaussian blur or a lens blur, any of the, any filter for that matter, typically would be permanent on that layer, unless you're working with the smart object. If you're working with the smart ob object, you can always go back later and edit it later. I'll show you that in a second here. So let's go to image, adjustments, and then shadows and highlights. It's, it's really kind of hidden here. Um, you're not going to find it uh, in your adjustment tools. It's not there. Uh, you can only really find it in that image adjustment area. And this, these adjustments that you have here are kind of like the highlight and shadow adjustments that you have in Adobe Camera Raw. They're just a little bit more extensive because not only do you have one shadow adjustment uh, slider, you have three. Now, these other two, tonal width and radius, will not work without the amount being up on the shadows. Once you move the amount up, you can start affecting the tonal width and the radius of the effect that you're going to have on your shadows. Now, I don't really like to open up the shadows in my HDR images. And by what I mean by open up the shadows is you see these were shadow areas here, but now they're um, almost the same as the pumpkin in front. The pumpkin in front is the focal point. I want to make sure that that remains the focal point. So therefore, I want to push those shadows back and pull the highlights forward a little bit. So uh, we can do the same thing with the highlights. Go to the amount on the highlights and see what we can do with these highlights here too. And what you see is that these start to work hand in hand. What you do with the highlights will affect what, what happens with the shadows and vice versa. So you can make that judgment call as to what you want to do with that. You can toggle the preview by pressing the preview on and off. Um, and down here at the adjustment section here, you can adjust the mid-tone contrast uh, or the color correction as well. Um, color correction, I really don't mess with too much. Just usually leave that at the default of 20, and I might sometimes adjust the contrast, the mid-tone contrast, to bring out some more of those highlights and shadows uh, that I've done up, that work I've done up top. So press OK. And what we see is because we have a smart object here, we now have some. This is small smart filters. Now you can turn those smart filters on and off to see what you've done to your image, or you can double click right here under shadows and highlights and get right back into that window pane. You normally wouldn't be able to do that. If you did the shadows and highlights adjustment tool on just a normal layer, it would make it a permanent adjustment. With the advent of the smart filters here, we get the ability to go back and edit the shadows and highlights as we feel. And why that's important is so you might not think it's important now because you could always just go to the history and just go back. Sure, you can do that. Or as you're working, you have the ability to go into, say, curves. And as you're working on your curves adjustment layer, say you did something to the curves adjustment layer that you like on the curves, but you think that it's doing something to your shadows and highlights that you want to change. You can always go back and change the shadows and the highlights later now that you've done the smart object editing. If you want this to become a regular layer and have all of the edits that were done to it merged on top of it, you have to right click and go to rasterize layer. Now you might have to do that for certain filters. If you want to apply um, multiple filters to multiple layers or do multiple adjustments to multiple layers, you might have to rasterize that layer first. And to do so, just right click and rasterize that layer. Um, if you want to save this, go to Layer, Flatten, and now you can file, save as a TIFF or a JPEG or whatever you please. So now I want to show you something different. It's a, it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't want to close that yet. Um, 
So I showed you how to use the shadow and highlight adjustment tool on just a normal everyday HDR image. I didn't really mean that as a pun. Um, but now I want to show you how you can use it on your dodge and burn layers. So I'm going to create the normal dodge and burn layer here by pressing a new layer. Go to Shift F5 or you can go to Edit Fill. It's the same thing and go to 50% gray. Now I'm going to change that to overlay. I'm going to select my burn tool here. And from my burn tool, I'm going to select midtones, about a 15% exposure, and I always make sure these are clicked so that as I use my pen tool, it's it's sensing the pressure that I'm using with my pen tool. So, anytime I dodge and burn, uh, what I try to do is I push back the shadows and pull up the highlights. Typically, that's what I do. Um, there's sometimes where uh, some of the shadow areas I want to be highlighted so I will dodge those areas out but for the most part um, what I see especially in HDR images is the shadows taking over and the highlights really not being a star of the show so you get these really uh, depthless photos photos that lack depth I guess so what I'm doing here is just kind of painting in these shadow areas to push them back and as I'm doing that, especially up here on this eyebrow, you can see it, it's pulling these uh, eyebrow areas forward. And I'm just gonna hit those black areas too because they, right, that's pretty cool. Now at any time, because I'm on the dodge or the burn tool, I can press the Alt key or Option on a Mac and I can go right into the dodge tool and start pulling out those highlights a little bit more. So right now I'm pulling out the highlights on the nose and if I release Alt, I'm back to the Burn tool and I can start burning some other areas. And I'm just kind of playing around here. Now, I'm going to show you, this is the Dodge and Burn layer that I've done on this. What I'm going to do is right click, go to Convert to Smart Object. Alright, now I can go to Image, Adjustments, shadows and highlights. Now you don't have to convert this to a smart object, I'm just doing it uh, to get you in the habit of trying to play with that because it's really kind of important sometimes to be working on smart objects rather than just regular layers. So again, you move the amount up and you can modify the amount of the shadows. Same thing with the highlights, they work hand in hand pretty well together so it's good to to experiment with both of them at the same time. I think I've pulled a little bit too much of my highlights out here. so. I'm going to pull those back a little bit. And same thing with my shadows. A little too much. They're starting to turn red. Let's see with the preview. Alright, I can take that. I can use that. So let's press OK. Now, if at any time you want to make a, uh, a duplicate of the image that you're working on, you can go to the history palette. I'm going to show you this because I want to show you uh, the before and after pretty much here. And down here, um, you see this little layer with a plus sign. If you click that, it's going to duplicate all the stuff that you have going on with the original. Um, I just accidentally made a guide, so press Control H to get rid of those guides. Um, if you look at both of these, they both have the exact same layers going on right now because one of them is a duplicate of the other one. The duplicate will typically be uh, named after the effect that you just did. So this one says shadows and highlights. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this smart filter here and delete all these smart filters here to show you the original. This is the original dodge and burn layer I did. And this is the dodge and burn layer that resulted from the shadows and highlights adjustment and what it has done to the original photograph. Now I thought this dodge and burn layer looked pretty good, but this one looks even better. So you can start with a baseline. You're basically just giving yourself a, a baseline to start with for the dodge and burn and then modifying it accordingly with the shadows and highlights to get that area that you want. At any time you can mask too. Like uh, I don't really like what's going on with this really bright highlight right here on the nose. So I can add a mask and I can press my brush tool by pressing B and uh, I can go ahead and paint out some of those areas that I thought were a little too hot on the highlight areas. So you still have all the control that you would have with the layers. Um, it's just a, it's a great tool to use. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, this is www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, 
And uh, if you like what you saw here, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I try to do a tutorial every Friday. I've, I've stuck to it pretty well for the last uh, two years now, but sometimes I miss a beat, so you know, no harm, no foul. But if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to this, and uh, hopefully I will see you next week. Take care and have a great weekend, everyone.